Welcome to 5SPICE, a program for simulating analog circuits. In this video, I'll go through working with FFT analysis. In 5SPICE, an analysis specifies simulation settings and a graph or table to display the results. And note in this discussion when I say SPICE, I'm referring to SPICE programs in general, and 5SPICE refers to 5SPICE. FFT stands for Fast Fourier Transform. FFT computes the frequency spectrum of a digitized waveform, where the points in the waveform are equally spaced in time. However, SPICE does not take equal time steps between data points, and we'll talk about this in a moment. I've loaded the FFT demo schematic that's included with 5SPICE, so let's get going. To take a look at the analyses, the FFT analyses, we come up and click on Analyze, we click Select and Edit, and the Analysis dialog appears where all analyses are defined. And we can see, since it's a demo schematic, we already have several of them defined here. In 5SPICE, FFT analysis differs from the other analyses in that it occurs in two parts. 5SPICE first runs a transient analysis, so you can see the waveform that the FFT will process. And that's the setup we're looking at here. Then the user presses the FFT button in the transient graph to set parameters for the FFT and run the FFT. Running the FFT produces the frequency spectrum graph. And as part of running FFT, 5SPICE interpolates SPICE's unevenly spaced waveform points onto a grid of equally spaced time points, which is required for the FFT. So let's talk about choosing simulation settings. And to do that, we need to take a look at the math theory of the FFT. The lowest frequency that can appear in the FFT graph is determined by the length of time of the simulated waveform. So in terms of what we're doing here, that's the 2 value. So we have 100 microseconds worth of simulated waveform, starting at time 0 and going to 100 microseconds. And the frequency would be 1 over this, the reciprocal, which is 10 kilohertz. So that's the lowest frequency. The highest frequency we're going to see in the, in the uh, FFT graph is the 10 kilohertz multiplied by the number of time points divided by 2. So in this case, that's 256 times 10 kilohertz, which is 2.56 megahertz. And the factor of 2 comes from the Nyquist limit for sample data. So notice we don't have to stay with that. We can have a lot more resolution or go a lot more, I'm sorry, have a much higher maximum frequency by going to more time points. And then that takes more computation time. So we've got it set up for the 100 microseconds worth of waveform, 512 time points. And uh, based on these settings, 5SPICE makes sure its SPICE engine takes enough data points or takes data points close enough in time to meet the Nyquist limit for sample data. So now to run the sim, and notice that this is basically a transient uh, simulation setup, except here we have the time points. So to run the simulation, we drop down as usual to apply the settings and run. And there's our waveform. And you can see that this graph is basically the same as any transient analysis graph, except that this extra button has appeared here, the FFT button. And so what you would do, once you're satisfied that this is what you want, is to click the FFT button. And basically, this dialog appears here. Often when we're running an FFT, uh, we want to apply a window function. We maybe want to put the amplitude in dB, which is the default. And some other considerations. 5SPICE includes a mini refresher here for those of us who tend to forget the details of FFT. So please read this. But now, just to show in the quick once through how it works, once you've decided on your window function, and there are several of them available, pretty much you come down here and you run the FFT. 
And now we see the frequency spectrum. And we can see it starts at the 10 kilohertz we mentioned earlier, and it extends up to 2.56 megahertz. And think of these as the fundamental and then the harmonics, and the harmonics are falling off with increasing frequency. And you can use the cursor, though sometimes it's pretty hard to get it positioned right on the peak of the waveform because there may be more data points in the graph than we have pixels in the screen. So it helps to have the program blown up to be full screen size. And notice the, the, the scale is in decibels and it's calibrated in 5 spice in RMS magnitude, root mean square magnitude, to agree with a spectrum analyzer, which is different than transient analysis, which is based on peak magnitudes. Now suppose you had a question as you looked at this about uh, your original transient waveform. You can come back to the button and it will toggle you back between the two graphs now. So one more thing, if we wanted to retake the original waveform sample here, we'd have to go back and start the whole simulation from scratch. If we simply want to change, say, the window function that we have here, you can double click the graph or we can right click here and uh, basically where it says run FFT, this brings up this same dialog again. So let's rescale the axis for a second and let's uh, take off auto scaling. You'll see in a moment why I'm doing it. So taking off the auto scaling, you can see the graph has changed to where it only goes up to about 500 kilohertz. So now, originally we didn't have a window function, uh, mostly in FFT you do. So let's just put in a Hanning window function. And if you sort of watch the peaks here as I hit the button, you'll see it changes a lot. Okay. So basically, now we have the same time points with a FFT using the Hanning window function. And just a quick uh, comment. So why would you use window function? Let's go back and look at the transient waveform. Notice that we have an integral number of this waveform. In other words, the end of the graph doesn't come somewhere up here and give us just a partial copy. We have a uniform number of them. And you don't need a window windowing function in FFT for that. But if we had selected a waveform where we had only a partial part of the waveform here at this end, in the time frame. Remember, we selected 100 microseconds. Then that partial waveform is basically going to produce frequency components all over the place because the FFT makes the assumption that this waveform, and Fourier transform in general, makes the assumption this waveform goes on forever, and we've truncated it. So at that point, using window function filters out a lot, but not all, of the frequency spread that's caused by not having an integer number of waveform cycles. One, two, three, four, five complete waveforms. So that's what I wanted to show you, and thanks for watching.